Hey there. Good morning. I hope you guys are doing well. I haven't seen you since last Friday. Well, the sun is out today. The blizzard is over. It's very, very cold out. But God bless our farm and God bless you guys wherever you are today. Um, okay. Um, we are um, organizing um, a group that are, is going to help a parishioner move today. Even though it's cold, she needs to get into her apartment. And so you might hear some dings on my phone. So I apologize for that. Um, but no, I have had a great few days here. We had a great service on Sunday. We had a pair service in Edmore and there was over 40 people there. It was just absolutely wonderful. I just love it when everybody gets together like that. We had great hymns. We had a great um, children's sermon. Those New Guard kids are, oh man, they are just so cool. They fold their hands and they put their heads down and they pray when they're up in front of the whole church <clears throat> and don't mind it one little bit. God bless them. I love my kiddos. I think tonight, though, even though Wednesday is my favorite night, uh, we are going to do Zoom. And I just, oh, I feel so bad. It's supposed to be youth night tonight. But I just cannot <clears throat> see the parents and kids going out when it's 50 below wind chill. You know, it just, oh, my goodness. Um, okay, hang on, guys. You'll have to bear with me. Okay, hang on, hang on. Sorry, guys. Multitasking here, but you know what? This is live. Um, hang on. Okay, and then I do have something here from... Um, okay, we'll add her to my list here so I don't forget. Sorry, guys. Okay, well, let's start with our morning um, affirmations. I am important. Today is going to be a great day. The world needs me. Today I choose happiness. I believe in myself. And today is a new and fresh start. Today I will just do my best. And today and every day God loves me and I am his child. Praise the Lord for that. Praise the Lord. Okay, so I'm going to want you to get um, uh, your journals out or pencil and paper or however you do it. Because with Psalms today, I'm going to quote a lot of different Psalms and... Uh, what they are about so you might want to take notes on that and then um, also with that we're going to get into our prayers and our acts of kindness here so for our prayers um, prayers go out to the to Jamie Lundberg and his family from the Princeton area um, he was diagnosed with stage four stomach cancer um, when we prayed for him last week from Kim and now Sandy asked for prayers too um, and she just asks that the Lord wrap his loving arms around all of them. So send out some strong prayers there. Um, little, not little anymore, but Jaden Barrett, my friend's son. Um, well, they were from New London Spicer, but they're up north. But he, we've prayed for him quite a bit. And he um, has cancer. Um, he's gone through a long haul. He's been such a trooper. Um, but he had a scan on Monday and surgery on Tuesday. And so the family is asking for good results. He has been just so strong, so very strong, and so is the family. So please send prayers out for them. My friend from back in high school, Cindy Knight Williams, um, shared on Facebook that her husband, Paul, lost his battle to cancer. Um, we have also prayed for Cindy and Paul and the family, too, over time here. Um, but um, they are a family of faith, um, but they could really use some prayers during this, this difficult time. Prayers go out to my good friend from Minnesota, Mary. She has um, had a fever for about two weeks now. They can't figure it out. They did um, find out that she has anemia, so she is having to get intravenous um, iron 
um, and she has just been feeling so bad, so, 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 so bad. So please send prayers out to my friend, Mary. Um, another high school friend, Jim Codwell, is recovering from surgery, so please send some prayers out for him that that he has a good and fast recovery of his surgery. Um, and my friend from up northern Minnesota um, asked for prayers as her friend laid her stepdaughter to rest. There was no other details on that, um, but um, it's got to be a hard time. And Sheila, too, lost her son um, a handful of years ago and still feels it every day. So Sheila can imagine what her friend is going through, and so can the Lord. So um, please ask for some strength and direction, wisdom, understanding for this family. And then Judy Bakken um, also um, requests some prayers for her. She didn't really say um, exactly why, and I'll have to touch base with her later. Um, but God knows why, and that's all that matters. So uh, please send some prayers up for, for Judy that that uh, God gives her direction and wisdom and all that as well. So for our acts of kindness, um, let's see. My phone is going crazy. Um, okay, so we're good on that. But, um, okay, so Erica's son from um, um, back home, Caden, received a kindness award. And it says, congratulations, Caden Ellisted, for being nominated by the fifth grade team for the kindness award. This is why you were chosen. Caden is a very kind and outgoing student. He comes to school with a smile on his face and always says good morning to his teachers and classmates. Caden works hard in class and cheers his peers on when they need the support. He goes out of his way to help anyone in the classroom who needs it and does so in a very fun and kind way. Caden has been a wonderful student to have in class and we look forward to his positive outlook that he brings with him each day. Thanks, Caden, for making a difference in our school. Isn't that amazing? Congratulations, Caden. That is, um, I love that. That is so good for the schools to do. Um, so just a suggestion for you guys for an act of kindness coming up. Um, well, first of all, um, Giving Hearts Day is, hang on, let me look here. It's coming up here. It is the 10th, February 10th is Giving Hearts Day. Now I want to make some suggestions for you if I could. First of all, I am encouraging folks um, to donate to the um, Edmore Rest Home in Edmore here, where one of our churches is. Um, and if you guys would like to do that, uh, local folks, um, you know how to do that. Um, you can either make a donation at the, the bank there um, in Edmore Citizens Bank, um, or you can give it to Tammy. Um, or if you want to be anonymous and go through me, I will not uh, say a word. Um, but uh, that is where my Giving Hearts Day money is going this year. Um, so, and, um, so for you local folks, it's pretty easy for you to do that. But if um, any of our Coffee with Christ people would like to make a donation to the Edmore Rest Home, you can send it to me. Grab your pencil and paper. Uh, my address is 10646 80th Street Northeast, Nekoma, N-E-K-O-M-A, North Dakota, 58355. Um, or if you would rather donate to a different charity, if you go online, you can um, go to Giving Hearts Day 2022, and it will give you a whole list of places that you can donate to. So maybe some of you that aren't local around here have another local place around there, or maybe you want to go bigger like we did last year. I think we did um, St. Jude's last year, but I'm deciding to go uh, local this year. So do whatever you would like, but please find it in your heart to um, 
donate something to someone um, for giving Hearts Day. And also speaking of hearts, Valentine's Day is coming up and I have a suggestion for you. Um, pick a nursing home in your area and, um, you know, um, let's see, I wonder how you can do this. I know my people in my nursing homes here, but um, maybe, I don't know if they would give you the names or not if you called. Like some of, you know, you people back home I know have a lot bigger nursing homes, but maybe you could just get a number of residents um, and um, 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 uh, send, you know, say they got, they have 50 people in their nursing home, um, just send 50 little Valentines and then the people at the nursing home could put their names on it or something like that. So um, hang on again, guys. Sorry about this. Let's see. This is so rude, isn't it? Sorry about that, you guys. Wednesdays are a busy day. <laughs> um, so yeah, just an idea uh, for that. Um, you could do that. Anyway, okay, so now back here to um, more acts of kindness here. Um, Woody Leindecker shared this, and I thought this was so neat. My son Grant and his new wife Sarah were in Key West for a delayed honeymoon. They had a great time, took advantage of the hundreds of things to do while they were there. One day, as they walked along on a very crowded street, Grant found a wallet, which had obviously just been dropped. He picked it up, looked at the ID, and scanned the crowd for the owner, but there was no luck. It had over $200 of cash, plus many credit, credit cards and other important papers in it. Um, and so um, he looked on Facebook, couldn't find him, and so he ended up mailing the wallet um, to the person with the address on there. So God bless you, Grant. Um, there's good people in this world. The same thing happened to my son a uh, few weeks back. Um, he lost his billfold in Chicago, believe it or not, and somebody mailed it um, to actually our old address at Spicer because Jamie hasn't changed his license yet. <laughs> but being a smaller town, they delivered it to my mom and it was, it was good. So, um, anyway, um, 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 hang on again. Um, Okay, um, so yeah, so that was a pretty neat one. So next, um, 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 I don't know if you guys heard, Officer Wilbert Mora um, from New York um, was killed in the line of duty and he um, um, donated his organs and saved five people's lives. God bless him. Wow. True, true, true hero there in many, many, many ways. Um, so that is just absolutely amazing. Um, so Jeannie uh, from Alexandria shared with me, um, thank you to the kind soul who found my cell phone in a parking lot and turned it into Dollar General Thursday night. You have no idea how much it meant to get that phone back. Um, I'm on call 24-7 besides having my whole life on that phone. Bless you over and over. This was such an answer to many prayers. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, and I think that is all we have for acts of kindness. Um, so I have something to share with you. Maybe you guys have seen this. But when a flashlight grows dim or quits working, you don't throw it away. You change the batteries. When a person messes up and finds themselves in a dark place, do you cast them aside? Of course not. You help them change their batteries. Some need double A, attention and affection. Some need triple A, attention, affection and acceptance. Some need C's, compassion. Some need D's, direction. And if they still don't seem to shine, simply sit with them quietly and share your light. 
Is that not beautiful? Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, that is beautiful. That is beautiful. So um, with that, let us join in, um, join in prayer here. Dear God, thank you for your amazing power and work in our lives. Thank you for your goodness and for your blessings over us. Thank you for your great care and love. Thank you for your sacrifice so that we might have freedom and life. Forgive us for when we don't thank you enough for who you are, for all that you do, for all that you've given. Help us to set our eyes and our hearts on you. Renew our spirits. Fill us with your peace and joy. We love you and we need you this day and every day. We give you praise and thanks for you alone are worthy. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Beautiful, beautiful prayer. I just love it. Okay, so Psalms. This was an interesting one. I learned a lot, but I hope you, like I said, have your journals or your pencil and paper or whatever, because we're gonna you 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 might want to make a, a bunch of notations. So for the outline, um, there of uh, Psalms, and I didn't know this, but there are five books in Psalms. Okay. So uh, the first book is uh, uh, chapters 1 through 41. The second is 42 through 72. The third is 73 through 89. The fourth is 90 through 106. And the fifth is 107 through uh, 150. And so with that, I am going to go to my um, handy dandy chart here. But so in the first book of Psalms 1 through 41, they are prayers of lament and expressions of confidence in God's in God dominant. This book, hmm, that didn't quite make sense, but I think it's talking about God's dominance. OK, then in the second book, 42 through 72. Uh, they are communal laments, dominant the prayers, the, the communal laments are dominant with these prayers in this book. The book ends with a royal psalm. Book three, 73 through 89. In this book, the prayers of lament and distress are more intense and bleak. Hmm. Book four, 90 through 106. This book presents the answers to the bleakness of book three. The theme of the Lord reigns dominates this book. And then book five, 107 through 150. This book declares that God is in control and will redeem his people and praises God's faithfulness and goodness. See, I found that really interesting. I never, ever put that together. And then it's telling me that it has two main collections. Okay, so the first collection is chapters 2 through 89. Um, and um, it, it talks about the Davidic collections in chapters 3 through 41 and 51 through 72. And then two collections of the temple musicians, Korah and Asaphat. And that um, takes out the rest of the chapters in that first collection. The second collection is 90 through 145. And it talks about, um, um, in that collection, how the Lord reigns the, um, in 93 through 100. Hallelujah Psalms from 111 to 118. Songs of Ascent in 120 through 134. The Davidic collection from 138 to 145, which to me looks like a uh, something that was in the first collection as well. And then the conclusion of the Hallelujah Psalms from 146 to 150. Um, so anyway, I just wanted to break that down for you. I thought that was kind of interesting. That'll kind of direct you where you want to go if you want to check out some of these Psalms. So Genres, G-E-N-R-E-S, are different kinds of writings that share specific elements of content and form, okay? So most of the time when we read the Psalms, we read them in a devotional way. 
And this kind of reading is refreshing for our spirits and leads us closer to God and other fellow believers. But however, other times we may want to explore a psalm deeper. I think a lot of the times. And in those times, knowing about the genres, um, I, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right. Um, it, it will help us in our spiritual exploration. So each genre lists a sample of representative psalms for each of the following main genres in the Bible. Um, so actually, I am going to just see what this says. Uh, nope, I don't think that I'm pronouncing it right, you guys. Genre. It's genre. Genre is how it's pronounced. It's genre. So, um, the first main genre is the hymn. The beautiful and glorious songs of praise to God characterize the Psalms. These hymns highlight God's character and deeds like his goodness, majesty, and virtue. And um, some examples where you can find them are Psalms 8, 19, 29, 33, 65, 100, and 145. The next genre is the lament. Now, curiously, the Psalms of lament outnumber any type of any of the other Psalms. Um, and lament here is um, sadness um, and grief. So this fact might reflect the messiness of life, the many reasons for suffering and sadness, stuff like that. But however, the Psalms do not typically end in lament or sadness or grief. I found that really interesting. They move from lament, excuse me, sadness and grief to praise. They move from grief to joy. Now the conclusion of the Psalms, the magnificent hallelujah songs in 146 through 150 reflect that with God, with God, all tears will be dried. All sufferings will turn to joy and all injustices will receive the proper and righteous response. There are individual prayers of lament in um, chapters 13, 22, 31, 42, 43, 57, and 139. And then there are more, uh, uh, and there's, uh, there are also ones in, in more too as well, but then we have community laments the ones i just read you were individual but we have community laments in chapters 12 44 80 85 90 and 94. now these prayers provide us with the language to ask god to intervene in our favor they might include a plea for god for help the specific cause of suffering a confession of faith or innocence a curse of the enemies um, confidence in God's response and a song of thanksgiving for God's intervention. Prayers of lament may include one or more now of these elements. Songs of thanksgiving is the first one. Now these songs focus on thanking God for his answer to a specific request. The request is not always explicit in the song, though it seems that they are connected to lament songs of thanksgiving can also be individual um, as we men mentioned before um, and communal and the individual ones would be in uh, chapter 32 34 92 116 118 and 138 um, and the communal ones um, would be in 107 and 124 now there are six main themes of psalms Okay, the first one is the Lord reigns. Now, this is the main claim of the book of Psalms and, of course, the whole Bible. But no matter who or what claims control over creation, God is the rightful and just ruler of all. Psalms 47, 93, <clears throat> and 95 through 99 offer a splendid and beautiful account of the claim that the Lord reigns. Next, we have creation. One of the best examples of God's rule over all is creation. God created everything and sustains it with his power, 
wisdom, and justice, as the Psalms 93, 104, and 29 tell us. Next, we have salvation. The Lord reigns because he has already defeated evil and has redeemed his people, as we hear in chapters 47, 68, 98, and 114. Next, judgment. The Lord reigns because his judgment is worthy, righteous, wise, and universal, as in the chapters of 50, 82, 94, 96, 97, and 105. And then we have God's people. God's people are the people of his pasture, the flock under his care, as it tells us in chapter 95, verse 7, and 100, verse 3. God redeemed them, it's stated in chapter 74, and has intervened in the history with power and grace. Last, the king. Oh, wait a minute. Is it last? I'm not sure. But anyway, the king. Unlike other cultures surrounding ancient Israel, the kings were not worshipped or held in higher esteem than other Israelites. The importance of the kings, however, was that God chose them to work through them to carry on his divine purposes. Toward the end of Psalms, the focus is more on the future king who is to come, who will restore and redeem Israel. This promised king, the Messiah, became the emphasis of Israel's hope and longing. Songs related to the temple. Some songs were to remind the community of their covenant with God, as in chapters 50 and 81. Um, I, don't, I shouldn't really call them chapters, but Psalm 50 and 81. Other songs, royal psalms, make mention of King David or his descendants, as in Psalm 2, 18, and 110. Songs of Zion celebrate God's presence with his people, um, as in Psalm 46, 84 and 122. It appears that the singing of these psalms took place during the worship at the temple in Jerusalem. Teaching psalms. Now songs have a unique way of teaching the people who hear and sing them. The wisdom psalms use traditional wisdom themes to guide and shape the view of those singing them as in Psalm 37, 49, and 73. Now, closely related to them, other psalms praise wonders of God's law and encourage God's people to obey it and delight in it, as in Psalm 1 and 19. The book of Psalms is a collection of collections. These collections were put together at different times and for pur different purposes we might never know. But however, when the songs and prayers were put together, along with an introduction in Psalm 1 and a conclusion in Psalms 146 through 150. The book of Psalms became a learning tool for God's people. Now, 116 Psalms have titles. It is not certain if the titles were part of the original writing or were added at, a later, at later dates. But however, they do provide important and helpful information. Now, in general, the titles give information about the psalm's author, the historical background, melody, use during worship, and a few other items. And according to the titles, some of the named authors of psalms were David, as we all know, 73 times. Um, I don't know how to pronounce this. A-S-A-P-H, 12 times. The Sons of Korah, 11 times. Solomon, two times, and Jeduthun, four times, and Heman, Eton, and Moses, one time each. That's kind of interesting, huh? I like that. So dating of individual psalms is difficult because the poems were collected over a long period of time. And most were composed between the time of David, around 1000 BC, and the time of Ezra, 450 BC. The Book of Psalms is a, um, a, a, a compilation of many songs by many authors over a long span of time. The book is a book of songs and prayers for God's people. 
The Psalms provide us with the vocabulary of God's people for worship and to express their love, joy, praise, sadness, anger, frustration, doubts, need for forgiveness, and loneliness to God. I love that part because they are reaching out to God with all of this, with all of this. I just love that. Now, because the Psalms are poems, they have a wonderful way to express the deepest emotions of our hearts. But whether in times of suffering and sadness or joy and celebration, the Psalms have been close to God's people at all times and places. Poetry relies on heightened language and powerful images. Poetry, uh, the Psalms are, are beautiful. They're just absolutely beautiful. They say much with a few words and can express deep feelings that are not easily just regularly spoken. Now, Psalms is a book of instruction. It might not be coincident that the Psalms are divided into five books, as we talked about, just like the Pentateuch, a book that instructs us what it means to be God's people. And we've talked about that earlier. But however, unlike the Pentateuch, the Psalms do not give instructions about how to pray and praise God. Rather, like Jesus did when the disciples asked him to reach them how to pray, the Psalms show us how to do it. Finally, the Psalms express God's people's longing for the coming of the Messiah. God had promised through the prophets that a descendant from King David would always sit on the throne of Israel. The promise of this anointed king, the Messiah, became one with God's other promises to restore and redeem his people and the world. Although the Psalms are not prophecies in the same sense as the prophetic books, they do anticipate. So they speak prophetically about the coming of the Messiah. The New Testament quotes to, uh, many Psalms in connection to Jesus. Now, when Jesus said that all the scriptures spoke of him, he specifically mentioned the Psalms. The New Testament writers quote many of the Psalm texts in connection to Jesus being the promised Messiah. Psalms 2, 16, 22, 69, and 110 are the most quoted Psalms of the New Testament. Interesting. All of them anticipate and explain the identity of the promised king. God promised to be with his people. In times of suffering and troubles, it always seems that God has turned his face away from his people. However, the songs of petition, lament, and praise show that God has always been faithful to his word. He answered the requests of his people because he is good, powerful, and compassionate. Humanity's ultimate plight Sing and death will be finally, or sin and death will find, be finally answered through the Messiah, the son of David, that the Psalms anticipate, anticipate with much longing and faith. The Messiah has come and defeated sin and death, my friends. But we still live in a world filled with trials, temptations, and suffering. However, the songs of petition and lament and praise in Psalms invite us to trust that God is always present, that he reigns over all and he will intervene in the perfect time with the perfect answers to our needs. So Friday, we're going to pull some stuff that we can take with us and learn from the book of Psalms. And next week, just so you know, we will be into Proverbs. We're just moving right along here, right along. So I said a prayer for you today and know that God must have heard. I felt the answer in my heart, although he spoke no word. I didn't ask for wealth or fame. I knew you wouldn't mind. I asked him to send treasures of a far more lasting kind. I asked that he'd be near you at the start of each new day to grant you health and blessings and friends to share your way. I asked for happiness for you in all things great and small, but it was for his loving care I prayed the most of all. Amen. 
So with that, let us join in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, and deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. So may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord look upon each and every one of you with his favor and give you all his amazing peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Today is a gift from God. That is why they call today the present. So make the most of this beautiful day because this is a day that the Lord has made and let us all rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. Uh, one more prayer I want to put out. I forgot to mention Margaret. Uh, Margaret moved into a, a different apartment. And so we pray that she still gets to visit with her friends and is as comfortable in that apartment as she was in the other one and continued healing to her and all of our regulars. So until Friday, um, you guys have a great couple of days. Stay warm. Be safe, and until Friday, God bless, and bye for now.